Hey guys and girls, I have picked up, thanks to the generous gift of a friend, Sharon, this beautiful old buffalo blower, and it is gorgeous. It's it's old, it's beat up, and it needs uh, quite a bit of repair and restoration done to it. You can see the handle's broken off. It's, it's pretty rusted. All of the bolts seem still in two separate pieces. They haven't like rust welded together. But the thing that excited me the most is it takes quite a bit of effort to do this, but it does. Yeah. It does turn. And just because it takes a lot of effort now doesn't mean it can't be made to look good. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to completely clean this up, take it apart, remove all the rust, repaint it, bring it back to what it looks like coming off the shelf all the way from Buffalo, New York. We're going to forge a new handle and maybe put a nice wooden um, handle on there. Make it look, not just bring it, not just bring it back and restore it to its original state, but let's see if we can make it better than it originally was. So first thing we're going to do is have to put some penetrating oil on these nuts and bolts so that we uh, can actually get into this thing and see what this condition is on the inside. So disclaimer, this isn't meant to be like a tutorial on how to restore blowers. I'm just going to do it my way and you know, it's all a bit dodgy but I'm working with what I got. And uh, I have, this is actually my third blower that I'll, I've restored because I love old hand crank blowers. Uh, as many of you will know and so um, Each one is slightly different each model is the way that the gearing works the way that there's there's like I've worked on a big one that had a clutch system that engages that freewheels um, with a little flywheel system um, When you stop spinning which was really cool and one day I've got to finish restoring that one um, I've done all the internals and it runs beautifully. I just got to do the outside But it's big. It's a monster. It's the sort of thing. That's like a leaf blower hand crank leaf blower this one is going to be a fun little one, so um, don't take this as necessarily a tutorial, but uh, it gives you an idea of what to expect inside these things. Right, I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. I'll let that really penetrate down in. Not a good enough reason to use the word penetrate. And then we'll try breaking those nuts loose. Propeller moves very, very well, uh, and you can see if you turn it around enough that it is held in place by a little square headed bolt. So, we're going to need to get the oil down in there and then get that bolt out so that we can lift this propeller out. Now I'm going to give you a pro tip that will probably give you some, uh, save you some frustration with these. A lot of these square headed bolts uh, have a quarter inch square head which fits quarter inch square sockets. Um, and so while it doesn't necessarily make it easier, it does help to be able to get purchase on it in there. You can slide this over there and use a bit of uh, like an allen key in that end and undo it.
get to parts pulling one of these apart where you need to start using some uh, gentle persuasion the key word here is gentle because at this point in pulling one of these apart you don't know where the rust damage is you don't know where the seized parts are so you need to make sure you're not like leveraging against something that's pitted and will shatter um, or will create undue pressure where you don't want it to be so I may be using a large pry bar with a lot of leverage but I'm going to be using it very gently and what we're going to do is we're going to start easing the casement apart um, just because I can see there's a lot of gunk in there that I can't clearly see whether or not it's just gunk or whether it's a rust weld because when two pieces of metal rust next to each other they can actually fuse together and you, it's a weak bond but you do need to break it and so I'm going to try and do that very gently. Before we start finagling things at the front, I want to do a little bit of investigation here. That looks like an old-fashioned version of like a, uh, a circlip. So I'm going to see whether or not that needs to come off to allow this to pass through the body. I've never come across one of these at this particular point before, but I've never worked on one of these models before. So rather err on the side of caution, and let's get some circlip pliers and see if that needs to come off before I start yanking too hard at this casement. Heh, not a circlip at all, just a split washer. Interesting. So one great way to uh, shake off rust welds is some gentle love taps with a, uh, a little hammer. Not enough to dent the, the metal work, but just enough to sort of jar things loose. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to take this process slow because I don't know what's inside there. I'm not sure what might fall out and I'm not sure um, if there's anything hiding from me. So a couple of love taps just to break those bonds. I'm going to try and scrape out some of that gunk and see what I can see before going too hard at this. You can already see that working there. And there we go. Well, firstly, look at all that grease. Look at that. Look at the remarkable condition that that's still in. I'm going to have to do very little work to get that functional again. So first off, let's spare a thought for the amount of grease in this thing, which I am very grateful for, because that grease is what kept this thing in such good condition. Uh, this will clean up very nicely once that's all been degreased and, and cleaned up, but I will be re-greasing it with modern grease um, in order to have it run at peak efficiency but that mechanism is gorgeous I'm gonna have to do a, a, a nice close-up with uh, maybe slow-mo with some piano music yeah that's what that needs let's do it date this thing yet because uh, I want to clean it up to see all of the markings on it so I don't know when this is from they um, were produced a lot about 90 to 120 years ago um, so it could be more modern than that it could even be older who knows but uh, if I figure it out by the end of the video I will be including the age in the video as much as it seems like sacrilege at this point the uh, best course of action for me is to soak this thing in degreaser and just um, blow it out and clean it up as much as possible to get rid of the old grease that's in there that way I can fully uh, clean it get rid of any debris that's in there lubricate the whole thing um, make sure it's running right re-grease it repack it um, yeah so it's gonna seem pretty aggressive but let me tell you it's uh, it's gonna come up beautifully Judging from the quality of that action already, it's going to come up beautifully. It's going to be a gorgeous piece of equipment. Now 
Now the keen-eyed among you may notice that this does actually break down further. There are more bolts and this thing can be completely pulled apart. Given how well it's working and how old this thing is, I am loath to pull it apart much further. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glove up, because I've just been using some pretty caustic chemicals, uh, and I'm going to hand clean everything I can access, then assess the situation. So that's my next step. We'll see how I go from there. of the gunk out of what can be accessed um, around the tops of the gears and the plate and everything I'm feeling much more confident about um, disassembling this further uh, from what I can tell it's just going to be a couple of spaces a couple of bushings a couple of washes that I have to keep track of you don't want to lose any of the pieces that could fall out of this um, uh, my concern was that some of these like they're a century old and some of the bushings and things can actually fall apart on you as you pull them apart uh, from now that I've cleaned out most of the the old grease and I can see a bit clearer I can see that they're all beautifully intact um, or seemingly and so I feel a lot more comfortable pulling this apart further so let's break this down and get all the parts out and give it a really thorough scrub see I now have much better access to get the gunk out of here and to fully clean these gears you can also get a clear look and see that all the teeth are intact which is why it runs so smoothly quite a bit of gunk but once that's cleaned out that will look lovely so let's get that clean super cool so um, rather than having ball bearings you know like uh, the ring style donut style ball bearings they have phosphor bronze bushings which when you take you know a nice hardened steel shank and you stick it in there it spins very very smoothly because phosphor bronze kind of acts like a natural lubricant uh, so it's a cheap way to have very reliable um, sort of lubrication and smooth movement on a rotational plane. Look at the condition these are in. It's like they were made yesterday. But another cool thing is how these were fabricated. So you've got this gear which almost looks sort of drop forged out and then engine turned to be flat. These balance holes have been added in there so it would have been balanced but the central spindle that has the gear on it, you can see where it's been peened over in the center to lock it in place. One at the top, one there, and one there. Those peen marks are what uh, clamp this uh, into the shaft. And being done in those three directions like that, probably simultaneously ensured that it stays perpendicular to the cog. It's very cool. Okay, so we're at a point where all the gunk has been cleaned out and I've just sort of temporarily put it back together. It's got, at this point, no lubrication in it, no new grease or anything. So that actually has to get done before I put it together for the final time. But I mean, it just moves so easily now. Oh, pinky finger. Um, spins up beautifully. So 
I don't want to run it too much with no lubrication, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I was able to put it back together <laughs> in a working function. So at this point in a restore, um, you have the choice to make of whether or not you want to try and make it like better than new or whether or not you just want to get it running and nice again. Um, so I know a lot of channels like to do the full restore. I could go through and like surface grind all of these gears and, and make everything be completely taken back to, to brand new on the inside like that. Uh, that's not my goal here. I want this to um, be a usable thing that I'm actually going to use in my forge. Um, so basically I want to get it working, I want to get it nice, and I want to get it working in a way that I can reliably continue to use this for the rest of my life. Um, that does not require me to take it back to, you know, look at and operate in a million bucks. Um, I, if I was to do that, it would take many, many hours, uh, and my spare time is limited. So, um, the outside is going to be where most of the pretty work is done. The inside is going to be aimed at functional. So the next step before I go through and properly lubricate it is, um, before we douse this whole thing in degreaser, and what that did is it softened the large clumps of grease enough that I was able to clean it out. But now there's kind of a, a thin sheen of leftover pockets, and that thin sheen now needs to be removed. Uh, so it'll be another pull apart, degrease everything, wipe it out, um, uh, do parts cleaner, and then completely lubricate it. Um, and then I'll be able to do final reassembly of the internal mechanism. Um, however, I'm going to save doing the final assembly until I have finished work on the housing piece. So basically, I'm going to pull it apart, degrease it, clean it out, uh, and then I can get to work on cleaning up the housing. So once that's soaked in a little bit, um, I will clean all that residual grease out and basically I'm take it to the wire wheel and um, just sort of lightly try and brush off the worst of the rust um, from the outside of the uh, casement. And uh, once the any sort of flakes or chunks have gotten rid of, we can actually move to uh, applying rust converter. So, um, since the rust pitting and, and everything is not too bad under the surface, um, I was going to do an electrolysis bath, but it's really not that bad. As you can see, the, the pieces are in quite good shape. And so, there's not that much I have to do. So, rather than going deep clean on it like that, what I'm going to use is rust converter. Not rust remover, not like uh, evapor rust. Rust converter turns iron oxide, which is rust, into ferric phosphate, I believe it's called, um, which is kind of uh, well, normal red rust is red oxide. Ferric phosphate is black oxide, which is a, also a type of rust, but it's not a harmful type of rust. It's almost like an oxide coating. So any residual rust that's left will be turned into black oxide, which will actually form a protective layer, which will exist under the paint coating that I'm going to put onto this. So what I'm going to do is paint the whole thing down with that rust converter gel. Um, let it sit for a little while, and it'll sizzle up and, and uh, do its little chemical converty thing. And then we'll wash that off. Ironically, we'll wash it off with water, uh, give the whole thing a good scrub, a good treatment with WD-40 to push out any residual water uh, and then it will be ready to actually start painting which is pretty cool.
are all done now and um, largely dried off you can actually see this was exposed to the elements and this was covered in grease the preservation difference is incredible but uh, I was gonna um, oil these with WD-40 like I said before to get rid of any excess moisture but since I'm gonna be painting it um, I'm gonna use a heat gun to get rid of excess moisture and so I'm just gonna make sure that it is baked basically so there's no moisture left uh, and then it'll start being ready for a bit of painting. Okay, so some of the pieces will be nice and easy to paint because there's nothing that needs to be masked. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean when I get to those. But um, first we're gonna get some of the insides coated because um, I wanna do the insides as well. Just. A lot of the rust buildup tends to happen on those because they're usually not treated, but uh, they are going to be treated in a mind of So anyway, there's those bronze bushings I want to cover up. I'm not going to do a super neat job of it. I could go really neat, but you know, I just want it to be I don't want there to be paint on those bronze bushings, but everywhere else I want to be painted, so simple as that. Some are gonna be easy like that, some sections like this, and be a little harder. So while all that paint is drying, uh, we need to do something about this handle. So the original one had snapped off. I'd originally thought of maybe welding on a new handle section to the original piece. But then I thought, meh, that's not as exciting. So what I might do is I'll save the actual juncture point, but make an entirely new crank arm that's a little more decorative. Um, put a little forged twist in it, give it a little bit of an S shape, um, just for a little bit of character. Uh, because why not? Because, you know, we're, we're making this nice. Uh, and then it allows me to add the fittings for um, a fancier type of actual handle that will be attached to it. So uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's light the forge and we'll see what we can do. ground the uh, little plug out of the broken handle and now have that piece. I could have remade this but I figured waste not want not. I've made a new, forged a new ha uh, crank handle which I've yet to clean up but I'm going to do all the welding bits first. That will attach like that. This one's got a nice little bit of curve to it because I didn't like the straight one, it was a bit plain. And um, I found this bolt and nut that is handle length, so I'm going to weld that nut onto there, and that'll make me a handle that I can actually unbolt and slip a wooden, you know, washers and a wooden handle piece into. So I've got to clean all this up and do some welding.
So we're welded up now and everything's in line. Um, I just need to go to it with basically like a die grinder, clean up where the welds are so that it, I, I kind of want it to look like it's one piece. So I'll just do some neatening, a um, bit of grinding, bit of touching up. But I'm also going to run back to the forge and put a bit of an outward bend in it. Now I'm looking at it, the original handle, basically the shaft came out and then the original handle went straight down. I want mine, I've got a little bit of a sideways S in it. I want it to S out away from the body of the blower, just a hair. Uh, so I'm going to do that before I do the touching up because uh, it'll make it a lot easier um, without having to have forge scale build up on it. So now I've got my nice curve this way, but also a little bit of a curve this way. And that just prevents any risk of the, the back of the handle banging into the casement of the uh, blower itself. So now I just need to get in with the die grinder uh, and grind out the, the welds, clean them up, make it look like a one homogenous piece. So to keep in theme, with this, I actually have some Tasmanian black wood that is uh, from an old cot that um, was built a long time ago uh, for the infant child of the owner of the estate upon which I live. And I live in a, a historic estate. That estate goes back to a white settlement of Tasmania. And um, it's got to be older than this blower is. So I thought it only fitting to have A, a Tasmanian wood on this New York made blower, but also very old wood. So the cot that it came from existed 180 years ago and um, the wood from it would, would have been uh, older than that if it was fully dried. So um, yeah, I thought only fitting to put that on there. So after knocking a hole through the middle that fits the, the handle, I'm going to round this up. I do have a wood lathe, can't be bothered pulling it out, so I'm going to do a, a dodgy job on the grinder. There we go, not perfect at all, but um, it's got a rustic charm, like the rest of the blower will have. Um, let's just get some oil on this and we'll get to see the character of this almost 200 year old bit of blackwood. So all of our pieces are pretty much done, but I love this lettering that is embossed on there and what I want to try and do is paint it white so that it stands out I think it would just just make it pop and look really classy I tossed up between like a forest green and white and I settled on white so um, let's do that because the paint's still drying on the new crank arm so while that's drying I'll, I'll see what I can do I don't have the steadiest hand in the world for painting but I'll give it a try Super happy with how that came out. Um, and now that that is done, the new crank arm is also done drying, uh, which means we are ready to assemble. Uh, and that also means ready to lubricate the whole thing as well. So it's gonna be a bit of a meticulous process to get the gearbox uh, together. And we'll do that first, um, lubricating it properly as we go. And once that's sealed up, the rest of it should go pretty straightforward.
for the final reveal. I don't have anywhere to mount it. <laughs> These um, mounted in a fairly unique way um, which I'll explain in a bit but uh, I wish I had could get like glamorous close-up shots of um, it being worked while attached to a forge but unfortunately that's gonna have to come later. Um, but here it is. Look at that gorgeous piece of equipment. It's a new handle. Buffalo Forge. And have a listen to this sound. Doesn't that just make you smile? <laughs> so uh, while my hand painting job is not super great, I think it does it justice. This thing uh, was junk. It had been abandoned with a broken handle, left to rust. And now it was brought back to life. So that is the mounting system. And it does confuse a lot of people. But what the um, Buffalo Forge Company used to sell forges as well. And their forges had um, a clamp system that was a pipe, like a half pipe, and another half pipe that clamped together. And it had that lip, it sort of encased that lip. So if you can imagine a larger piece of a half pipe goes over there that's got a groove in it, and then another one on the other side, and it had bolts through it that would basically clamp onto that, and uh, the groove would hold onto that rib. And that's how they mounted. Because these are only little ones. These are the small buffalo blowers. Um, but, yeah. Just love that sound. Thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel consider subscribing uh, check me out on all of these platforms here i'm mostly active on instagram that's where you can see most of my work so hope you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you on the next one